Hello everybody, welcome to the World Championship official cast of the first round match in Group A between K Fu, more or less is how you pronounce it, and Le Peg. Um, I think we should. I think we can have this. The colours they are. The green is uh, distinct from turquoise and black, isn't it? Uh, Raw Rimbo. Um, so yeah, Wood Elves for K Fog. We'll call him K Fog. That's easier. Wood Elves for K Fog. Undead for Le Peg. K Fog is Danish, and also he has an English passport. I think. I think he's dual nationality. Um, he qualified through the season five. He was top of ladder actually, and made playoffs as well, and uh, like and made the final four of the playoffs. And Le Peg is French, unsurprisingly, and he qualified via the KGVM World Championship qualifier. So there you go. There are the players. How they got there? Looking at the team, K Fog's team. He's gone maximum dodge. He's got three rerolls and an apple. He's got four dodge catchers, two blodge blitzers, of course, and then three dodges on linemen and two wrestles. Who's so got nine dodge? Actually, he hasn't got. He hasn't got max dodge. He's got nine dodge, two wrestle, and uh, a sidestep dancer and a strip dancer. I really like this sidestep dancer thing gives you a better one turn and it also defends against one turns a little bit so I do quite like the sidestep dancer and uh, Le Peg has gone for a pretty standard undead team 13 players 3 guards, tackle wrestle and a block ghoul, 4 ghouls of course so you know he has gone the heavier build with a guard on the mummies I think that's fine, I think I think either build is fine right You could, Dimmy likes the 3 block ghouls and then if you go bashy you get two guard mummies I, I think either's fine it depends what you find yourself like more comfortable with right if you if you struggle in the bash matchups then you take guard mummies if you struggle in the other matchups then block ghouls you know I mean I lean towards block ghouls but fair enough so this looks like a daca doesn't it this does look like a daca from K Fog. K Fog by uh, by common opinion, let's say. I would say the most accomplished Blood Bowl player in the world when you think about all the different facets. You've got Blood Bowl 2, Blood Bowl 3, Fumble, and Tabletop. And he has dominated in every single environment. Whereas nobody else really has. Nobody else has. Um, you know, like, I haven't played tabletop. And Dave O hasn't played fumble, for example. So, K Fog, he's, he's, he's dominated in all of them. Like, people like Maomi haven't come to Blood Bowl 2 or 3. Um, things like this. So, <laughs> yeah, PC... PC has been quite dominant on all of them, but I wouldn't say to the same extent. A hair, a hair behind K Fog. But you know, like for example, Purple Goo hasn't done the business on Blood Bowl 3, has he? Or Blood Bowl 2. You know, he would he would be the other person with a real big case for it. I would say. And you know, I know, uh, I know. PC likes Malmia, throws him in the conversation. But again, he hasn't really got it done on tabletop, and hasn't got it done on Blood Bowl two or three. Uh, if you look at Olivier Dulac, he certainly nailed the tabletop aspect. But you know, again, hasn't done too much on Fumble or Blood Bowl two or three. So I think when you look at all of the things that K Fog has won over all formats, like Crucifer, for example, absolutely dominated Blood Bowl two to a, a ridiculous amount, but that's all he's done, you know. But again, Purple Goo, like, just hasn't done it on Blood Bowl 2 or 3, has he? So, I'm not saying that makes him worse. I'm not saying that makes Purple Goo worse. What I'm saying is, people who only play Blood Bowl 2 and 3 haven't had the chance to see him, right? Haven't, haven't had the chance to see him in action, but... Uh, 
it might be purple goo for me as well but uh that that's the thing it's just like the breadth of the breadth of uh plays belongs to kfog doesn't it more than anybody else and also he's a lovely lovely chap uh, which is good isn't it So yeah, there was a ghoul exposed, so KFOG is going straight for him. If you're not taking what he's in this tournament, why not? Yes, well, I'll be honest, Calcium, I do regret it a bit. I probably should have messaged KFOG and... Uh, well, I didn't actually. <laughs> what you can do is, in Blood Bowl 2 and 3... You could always spy on people's teams, right? And then look at their build that they've taken. I actually had already spied on KFOG and seen the team that he was taking, and I didn't copy it. Because um, I, I just thought, you know, I'll, I, I didn't like the idea of just getting banged out and losing, right? And uh, But then, as KFOG said, you can get banged out and then your opponents will, just won't try to beat you because you've got you know, your team's ridiculous and can score with five players. So even if you do get reduced to five players, they can't even go for the win because you'll just score against them. <laughs> wow, honestly, k lovely. He's lovely. He's, he's, he's the loveliest person that I've met, probably, in real life. He's a lovely, lovely, lovely fella. Um... No, no disrespect to all the other lovely people I've met. Pretty much everybody I've met in Blood Bowl has been lovely. But, um, yep. Wait, David, David was scheduled for nine. Did he just change that? <laughs> No, no, he's just playing a random dude. <laughs> Dave was playing a random dude. Right now, Squeaky McSquig. Which I don't agree, by the way. I do not agree with just playing a random ladder match before a super important match. But there you go. Definitely strength four, if not five in real life. Yep. Yep. Anyway, no spoilers, please. Even if, uh, you know, even if, uh, even if it is interesting, uh, I'm gonna try and keep the spoilers to a minimum. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you want to watch Dave or live, they'll watch him live. Won't. Um, so I was always gonna pick. I'll always pick not Dave or if there's a choice between games to do. And the same with like Tree and stuff as well, right? Like you know, try to pick the ones that aren't being covered live and then if people want to watch the things live they can watch them live and I'll do the replays um, later so this is a little bit light isn't it here by uh, going for that foul it's only a little bit light but we can uphill for a path through on a full pow <laughs> we're not going to do that You put him on a large base, yeah. <laughs> oh, removal. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Now it gets that much harder to defend the Daka down a player. Interesting having the mummies in the middle. I, I like. I prefer them out on the wings. Although, like, yes, it means you're only fighting one mummy. At least one of them is definitely relevant in, like, a really good spot. Oh, wow. Just dodges straight through. Outrageous. Rolls all the dice. Look a dog. 
I think it's, I mean, that is a thing that I like to do as well, right? Like, it's pretty good to get somebody through on the other side. Because now if they divert somebody to him, then they're not screening properly. If they don't divert somebody to him, then when well, you've got somebody free who can, you know, assist and things and do things and get the ball to him. So it is really good if you can dodge somebody through to get somebody dodged through. Absolutely. Indeed, Squeaky, but the problem is against the Dakar, if they break through, they're gone anyway, right? So, is that is the problem you're facing. <laughs> and if he puts them both in the mix together, then they're both going to be left in the dust, so... It's a little bit tricky, but he does have the tackle, he does have the tackle, uh, white at least. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think this line is a better line to put the mummies on than where he had them like in the middle. I think this line's fine because then they can go three and then cover the sideline, right? So you can either, you can go full sideline or you can go, like if you're here, you can go three the way you've got quite a lot of coverage with each one. But when they were both central, I thought that was bad. They don't have to be on the extreme flank, but I think it's okay to be. Now he's running back with a tackler. Gets the knockdown. And the removal. Wow. The question is, does that give up the centre? And does it give up the breakthrough? Maybe not. Oh, he's gone for the foul. This means that a push on the mummy get, could get him through the centre if he wanted. You could also push this mummy to uh, go through here and like, gate dodge. But he's not thinking about any of that, it's only turn four. No need for anything crazy. But you know, that's what you've got to look for when you're defending the Dakar, right? You've got to think about those kind of weak links and what could happen. Yes, Metropolis Human. I, I do love the Dakar. I think it's a great strat. I think it's great that there's a, like a new strat in Blood Bowl that people can do things in different ways. <laughs> I would never ever uh, dodge with a ball carrier twice. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, well now, like, the, the mummies are asymmetrical, right? He's got two mummies. One mummy's halfway, the other guy's over the other side. So we've got a clear weakness, even though the tackler's this side. He's clearly weaker this side, and it's going to be a lot of work to get them moved over to compensate. Hello, Christopher B. No UI incidents for KFOG. That is going to be his bigness weakness in this tournament, I think, yeah. This is also another sneaky... Uh, a, this is like another sneaky group of death, I think, the KFOG one. I mean, like, none of the games are easy, right? And while he's received a certain amount of hype as Big Kev, KFOG, PTK, Core, whatever you want to call him, um... You know, there's a lot of dice. There's a lot of play. Um, I thought, honestly, ap apart from the apart from the setup and first turn, I thought Troop played great against me. Uh, I thought Spartacus played great in his game. So, like, you know, it, it, any anything can happen in these games. So, just because K Fog is like maybe the biggest name, it certainly doesn't mean it's going to be easy for him at all. Uh, having said that, Dave is playing Chaos. <laughs> so, uh, chaos, uh, you know, Dave should get, uh, you know, about as easy game as it gets in the first round, honestly. But, um, 
you know, there's still there's still three people who will all be getting that win, right, in the group. So it's not going to be easy to who who are those two of which two of those three are qualifying, right? But you know, still, you'd rather be in a group of three than a group of four, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no offense, no offense to the coach. It's it's the chaos are a really, 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 really bad team for resurrection. <laughs> Naf style resurrection, really bad. We might turn the corner here. Ball can come up to about here and blitz one of the ghouls. Won't get about there. Could, bl could blitz this one and get the ball to here. This is pretty good. You could do, Dimmy. Very, uh, very reasonable rates. Jimmy, fantastic. Uh, yep. I am, of course, the best blood bowler in the world. In uh, in my mind, <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm pretty good. But. Uh, We'll see, won't we? We'll see how I do in this. I mean, there's a lot of dice again, right? You know, if I hadn't if I hadn't snaked two dodges, I would have had a easy first round win, wouldn't I? So versus a pretty good opponent, I thought I did think Troop played very well. Oof, that was a bit of an unlucky one in nine because it means he can't he can't cut the corner and dodge to here, right? He could have gone to there before, but that's gonna yeah, it's gonna push him back even to here. Turn five, so he's got plenty of time. No, no, he'd never dream of dodging the ball carry. Like this is the thing, right? If you dodge the ball carry, you've got like a three percent chance of just losing or whatever, haven't you? And it's, it's not something you should ever do. As as easy as it is, to dodge with elves, you absolutely should not be making them unless you absolutely have to. <laughs> well, thanks, punter. I... I don't know what you know, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you, Kalon, yeah. <laughs> and he tags out the nearest mummy to stop him coming in. <laughs> and actually this this catcher can be a, of relevance as well yeah this is looking horrible for the peg isn't it Dak is just so effective against uh, against undead why 5 plus jump Dimmy can just dodge. <laughs> he can just dodge. Why do you want to jump all the time? You're obsessed. You're like Keat. Yeah, I mean, this is the big thing, right? Like, he, again, he, he's got asymmetrical mummies, right? One was in the center line, one was over there, which means makes it obvious that you go this way. If, if this mummy had been holding the corner, First of all, it's a lot harder to blitz him to get anything past. And second of all, he just couldn't make it irrelevant by tagging it out. So, so first of all, rolling a five to hit the war dancer is terrible because nothing good will happen after after you do it. And second of all, dodging out and then dodging again is better because you've got dodge. Burns a reroll on the rush.
It's annoying. Everything wants to rush, doesn't it? Right? This guard wanted to rush to there to get this 3D. This guy wants to rush to get there. He's keeping the tackler back. Oh, he's double rushing to base, maybe? Yep. Rushing with everything. I mean, now he has to make this dodge. If this dodge fails, He's done for. <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. That was quite a turn full of peg. Got some good dice. Very good dice. But I mean, it's still just a. Uh, probably just going to blitz up the sideline, isn't he? And, well, maybe not. Oh, starts off with a dodge. Could have won in 36. Didn't. So I guess he's going to blitz this guy and then block so that he's pushed out and then move people through. This way he saves dodging with a ball carrier, which is a pretty horrendous thing to do. Can confirm. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of got to go through. It's turn six, right? He almost has to go through this turn. And he's not going to have a lot to come with him. So this is a bit uncomfortable for Kfog. I guess he's trying to think how how much does he have to come through. Well, this guy can come through and like double rush or oh, single three, four, five, six, seven, double rush to there. Then the ball could go there, then he could block him, and then it's pretty safe. Exactly what he does. I mean I wasn't I wasn't coaching K Fog there. <laughs> he did it basically as soon as I said it. That was Dimmy. Dimmy tricked me. Dimmy tricked me by saying he couldn't go through, so I said exactly how he could go through. Um, I'm trying not to give the game away with things, but obviously I'm in no danger of coaching K-Fog. Um, I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, you know, at some point you're going to have to roll dice. The thing about coming through is he's got this guy that can dodge away, right? Can secure things. He's got this that can dodge through. He's got this that can come around with sidestep. He's got lots of things that he can do. Oh, he actually does the rush with him. So you can see, you know, if he powers first and... I, I quite liked having the uh, sidestepper on this guy. Oh, be hands off to the sidestepper, okay. Okay. Yeah, and then this guy does the two pluses to secure it. Lovely. Lovely stuff from Big Kev. Yeah, he had, he had, the, he had the, the, the fact he had this wrestler was the key thing, wasn't it? You can even get the uh, catch it there. Snakes. So yeah, so I I would have just moved the uh I would have basically been the same thing, right? Except I wouldn't have had that on a sidestep, I'd have had 
So I would have saved a two plus. I would have saved two two pluses. Cave would have made two two pluses that I wouldn't have made. I would have had the ball carrier there with the sidestepper here. Um, which honestly I like more, but now he's got the ball on the sidestep, which is a better place, better player to have it on. Of course he could have just started it with the sidestepper, I guess, but never mind. I mean, the thing is, the thing is, Dimmy, even if he does that, it's not even good, is it? <laughs> but yes, he can. He can dodge double rush, can't he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. Pushes him up. Or maybe out, and then he could try a surf, I don't know. Like, it's obviously better to have the ball in the sidestepper there. Because it means he can't put it in the crowd if he one dees you. So, it was definitely the solution. It was it was better, but it risked 2-1 in 36s, didn't it? Which, if either fail, it's pretty disastrous. But you can't live in abject fear of making any rolls at all, can you? Is the problem. Like, you are going to have to make some critical 2 pluses as cells. And 3% of the time they will fail. And if you're really unlucky, you'll fail two in the same game. <laughs> I mean, yes, you can live in fear of them, Niagara, but you will have to make critical 2 pluses. You will have to. <laughs> you will have to make them at some point in the game. You will have to make them. Now, maybe, maybe K Fog didn't have to there, right? Maybe he could have. Maybe he could have had the stripper getting blitzed on one D with the risk of the ball going in the crowd on a one in six after all the other dice. <laughs> you can if you want. Yes, okay, tree, you can. You can, but you shouldn't. You should, you should make the correct decisions. Um, is what you should do. And sometimes those decisions will be to roll two pluses. But usually it isn't. <laughs> usually it isn't. Usually the players, even with elves, don't cut that corner because you probably don't need that extra square. Probably. Yeah, it's they're not really several one and thirty sixes, are they? It's not really several one and thirty sixes. It's basically secure now already, and now these ones just make it double and triple and quadruple secure. I didn't like that rush actually. Did not like that rush. I preferred having something there and then failing the next player to dodge right. Can re-roll this. Uh, yeah, Dimmy, but uh, <laughs> um, in ODL's case, he chose that, didn't he? He said he was taking the air out, so... You know. Why wasn't the right runner a square to the left? You, do you mean the one that got blitzed? It's because he had to assist the block on the tackle. If you mean the ghouls, I've got no idea. Oh, like, you mean this one could have... Probably a rush, right? Didn't want to do it. Though this guy would have been better one over, wouldn't he? To stop this guy coming in here. Making all sorts of shapes. And now there's basically zero chance for Lopeg to do anything. Not a total noob, Dimmy, just pointing out that there was... 
The jump sack doesn't look good to me. <laughs> Nothing looks good. You just gotta hope they don't roll the dice. There's really sacking a war dancer is almost pointless, right? Especially leap, especially like jump sacking him because then you've just got no support for him whatsoever. That's a very good point, Barney the Lurker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the catcher. Uh, because it was Russia's, right? So he just moved him first. He was going to cause that with the catcher here, but he uh, he failed the dodge. Yeah, that's the thing. Because we said runner, right? And this is a ghoul runner. So I was thinking he meant ghoul. I sometimes... Like, when, when I'm commentating, I sometimes just call them, like, ghoul runners and stuff, even though, like... I would never ever call that a ghoul runner normally, right? But because it just says runner, I just call, end up calling them runners and stuff. And like, it's really weird. Like, there's like zombie lineman or something. I don't know. There's there's one that I whenever I say, it, I was like, what the hell am I saying? It's just a ghoul, right? He's not he's not a ghoul runner. He's just a ghoul. Now yeah, he might as well re-roll it, right? He's not going to score the one turn. One turn solo odds. Might as well just re-roll and try and bang with your mummy. Oh wow. Dimmy for Team France would be incredible. There could be a timeout, true, yeah, there could be a timeout. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll and you'll get two blocks on the LOS and you could use it. You'll know you probably won't get a knockdown on one of those and you can use it for that. So yeah, fair enough. But I can understand it, right? He's probably thinking, I've got to get lucky, re-roll, try and bang him, and then get two blocks on the LOS, get two cards there, and if you've got three cards, you've got half a chance, right? So, I don't think it's that strange to re -roll. But yeah, it's, pro it's probably not, not correct to re-roll it, but not crazy to. Oh, wow, look, Cole's got the, uh, the Wood Elf sideline stuff hasn't he very very wood elfy he's got the wood elf coach wood elf cheerleaders green kit he's fully in the uh tree uh tree logo he's fully in the spirit of uh, the customizations i mean kvog is pretty good yeah he's pretty good Daka confirmed best strat in existence there. Thanks to KFOG scoring with one. Yep. Oh, he's just gotta just gotta punch things and hope for the best, doesn't he? Foul. It's got 13 players. Uh, yeah, so he can still foul. He can still draw this right, Lepeg, if he casts about six elves. <laughs> if he casts about six elves, he probably won't. It's, it's No, he can't want to. He shouldn't try to want to. He should just try to three dice. He should just three dice with mighty blow. We shouldn't even try to one turn here. It's a waste of time. It's not going to work. It's it's just too it's just too many dice rolls. If you had three re rolls, I still think he shouldn't try to one turn. He should three dice with mighty blow and then gang foul. That's what you should do. You're not scoring the one turn. Like you're just not. Especially not this way. He's done it wrong as well. Bill should have been here so he could blitz and then get him one forward instantly. Get the ref. So he's got a bribe. Shouldn't use it now, right? He should just accept the send off here. Gets a full power. Because he's got 12 players, so like he should should he should just get like you know he should argue the call if uh 
if he gets caught on the foul. Oh, do you know what he could have done? He could have set up for a quick snap, right? He could have set up for a quick snap. He could have set up to just block, and then he could have put, like, uh, the ghoul here, so if he got quick snap, he could have moved it forward and then tried for a one turn that way. That was probably the best play, honestly. Mummy there, mummy there, ghoul here, quick rookie ghoul here, quick snap, move it in, and then that gives you one, two, like essentially two pushes straight away, and then block it again, and that, yeah, that would have been the way. That was definitely the way. Hate not making it with 90 blow, but there was no real way. I mean, what he could have done was he could have just not filled in this square, right? If he'd not filled in that square, he could have pushed him back and then got out of the way and then three dice blitzed him. Yep, big foul coming in. Injured. Excitement. Not even spotted. The Chaos? No, the Chaos doesn't stay out. But still, he's got KFOG down to 10 players. Now, if he makes some mighty blow blocks and removes another couple of players, and another foul, he can start to, you know, have a decent shot at the draw. the uh, offset chevrons means that if he gets a blitz or something or a misfield he's got lots of stuff to flip through one side pretty nice I, I, I think it's pretty nice I don't think it's I don't think it's especially better than normal chevrons but I like it <laughs> I like it more <laughs> which does count for something doesn't it So he keeps the tackler back to defend the ball. against the one turn isn't he like the one turn the blitz blitz kickoff result he's got to do everything in his power to make that not a disaster So you know this kind of setup, what's good about this setup is it forces people into like a kind of defensive shape like this and why while they may end up with a in a better defensive shape than if you didn't offset, at least it's limiting their blocks on the LOS. I'm not a huge fan of how Lepeg has done this. I would have definitely had one of these players on the LOS to make this a three ball. But uh, wow, great, great kick for the peg. It's already fully defended. <laughs> yeah, if, if if you think about it as well, if if this if this zombie was here, it's actually just as strong against a blitz because you can't blitz this guy and go through him, and all this is the same. So this was so much better. Basically, the back guy was on the LOS, and it became three, three, two.
I kind of hate that he's not fouling here and not three dicing with one of the mummies. But, you know, fair enough, it's a short kick. Make sure that you've got the ball defended as much as possible versus the strip dance that's right in front of you. Is completely reasonable. Wow, picks it up even before the dodge, before the blocks. That has to be incorrect, right? You have to block with tackle and three dice with a mummy first. You have to, surely. Surely. I'm using a lot of time here. But it's okay, isn't it? It's not so bad. He's, he's got five minutes of time bank and there's no overtime, so... Opens with a two. Which again has to be incorrect when you've got a three right there and a block right there. Only gets pushes. Oh, this wasn't the tackler on the LOS. I thought that was the tackler on the LOS. Just a blocker, but still. Yeah, that's okay, right? He's got four minutes. He's used three minutes out of his seven and a half, so he's fine for time. Even Cole's used two minutes of time. That's how serious that's how serious K Fog is in this match. First thing he does is put a scoring threat in. Rot out. I mean this is a big old cage, isn't it, from Lepeg? The problem he's gonna get, gonna have is like getting the knockdowns and getting the penetration. Like he really has to, he really has to do some damage. Ten L's is not easy to get through. Oh. One of the rare non-dodgers. And this is this is uh, not really anything. I think you have to three dice blitz the catcher. Right? Let you jam in and just force your way forward. Like you have to try and force your way forward. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. And three dicing with mighty blow is better than two dicing with tackle. Because you need removals, right? It's, it's not enough to just knock things over sometimes, right? You have to kill things. If you don't, if you don't remove, if you don't remove elves, you're not going to score. Basically, it's you know, there's a bit more to the game than that, but. <laughs> Not too much more to the game than that. At the end of the day, elves, you know, that go anywhere, do anything. It's pre they're pretty hard to deal with if they've got eleven of them. He's got guard cage corners. That means he doesn't have to do the uh, Vengabus cage, and he does just tackle blitz. I really don't like the tackle blitz here. He's kind of got a cages tackler as well, right? Like that's the thing as well. If you if you blitz with a mummy, then at least you've got a mummy on people, so like that's easier to defend, whereas he actually has to look after his tackle. Yeah, I like this foul. I really like this foul. I'd actually tucked in the uh, 
We took the ghoul in one first. Oh. Sent off for a stun. Obviously just use the bribe. That's better odds than arguing the call first. So, very good bribe usage. Hello Sol, you missed me penguin academying my own uh, my own game from the cup where I was uh, I found out that actually I played perfectly and made no mistakes whatsoever. Uh, no, I, I don't think I played terribly, but um, it wasn't you know it, it it wasn't perfect, but I'm I was happy with myself, so that was nice. I didn't think I was a complete moron at any any point, and. Uh, which is always good, isn't it? If you if you don't think you're a complete moron, um, there was a bunch of did three replays. It was uh, there was some Skaven there, two Skaven games just for you, and uh, now we've got the legend PTK. Another dodge without dodge. What is the world coming to? Like, I really like basing up those guys as much as possible, right? Like, that's where I'd be throwing my mummies in. Really uh, trying to apply pressure to these, the, the, the guys, you know, like you can't punch them, right? Because they're mummies. So you want to get your mummies on the two guys that don't have dodge. Because now you've got a much better chance of them, like, randomly failing. And just try and push forward as much as you can. Yeah, I, I hate ending any turn without your mummy in combat, right? Like, he he needs to be exerting at least his tackle zone. Balls like, you know, his strength five and his mighty blow. Threatening them with a smash if they fail a dodge away. Making it a huge commitment to punch him or impossible. I get that he wants the cage corners with guard, but he's like losing the bludgeoning tool of like you know the strength five to smash forward with guard as well and now he doesn't have the foul every turn either i think he's going to three dice this catcher eh? so again he's just not using the uh mummy mummy strength like this could be a goblin right essentially If you're not if you're not in contact, you could be a goblin. Whoa. Misclick or He's just not blitzed. He hasn't blitzed. His bribe's gone. He just didn't blitz. Wow. He like put in two players as if he was gonna three dice blitz him and then just didn't blitz him. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. I mean, I don't think he blitzed him. Maybe I'm wrong. That sure looked like he didn't blitz that turn. Has he still got this catcher there? Yep. Still got the catcher, just waiting. World Cup nerves? It's a real thing. It's a very much a real thing. I had uh, I had pretty crazy world championship. This is world championship. I had pretty crazy world championship nerves before my game, so completely understand that. And now he brings this guy back. This is a nice way of doing the corner, isn't it? The diagonal diagonal screen like this is pretty nice. They have covering the side switch a little bit more. Like I get wanting to have the guards, but at the end of the day, right, he could have just had the tackler rather than having two separate <laughs> cages, he could have Venger bust with the tackler and then had both movies out in front. 
exerting influence. Not a huge fan of this. He's just not getting forward, is he? It's turn twelve. Like he's he's just not getting forward enough. He's letting careful just go back one square screen. Back one square screen. It might be enough, like it might be enough. Especially when like the alternative is he jumps in gets the ball off you and scores. So, you know, if, at least if he can just get a few squares in, like two more squares in, he'll have a chance to score in turn 16. Might not be a great chance, but he'll at least have a chance. But I feel like with multiple re-rolls, being too conservative on either side of the ball isn't very good. Gets the cars. See, my play would have been three dice this guy with a mummy. And then the two assists that you need for that three dice are assisting the foul as well, right? And then when you knock him down, if you knock him down, you're knocking around three dice with mighty blow. And then you can put the other mummy in here. So you see you've had like two mummies in there, redoing a lot, protecting each other pressing forward instead he's a square behind that and uh, this guy got knocked over without mighty blow didn't he didn't matter in the end but it could it always could you know it, it changes the odds mighty blow in a very very significant manner But yeah, the, the World Cup nerves, especially by playing somebody of K-Fog stature, completely understandable. A lot of time here, you know, maybe he's thinking about things. Maybe he's just wasting time. <laughs> the stripper could come in for a leap sack, I guess, and would push him. If you put a player in here first, he would push him like kind of out. So maybe he's thinking the uphill strip isn't so bad. Oh no, maybe he wasn't. I mean, maybe he did think that and then just discarded it, right? Who knows what people were thinking. I've got no idea behind Cole's thought process in the game, right? Not everybody runs through like, you know, the same progressions or whatever. He might just be thinking, he might have... I mean, surely you've got to think about going for the ball, right? At least for half a second. But he might have considered it for a second and then dismissed it. Or he could have considered it for a minute and then thought about something else for a minute. You've just got no idea, have you? Um... Oh, he gets wrestled. That's a very bad play to get wrestled as well. Oh, all of a sudden, we've got a weak spot in the line. I basically have to re-roll this dodge out now and put in there. And there's the option of blitzing this guy and fouling him and getting down the side. Oh, tackle. Did he, he did he re-roll it? He didn't re-roll the dodge. Is he keeping his re-rolls for the one turn? I mean, now we don't even need to blitz the catcher. Now he can blitz this guy and scythe through the team. I feel this, this dodge is more important than the, the catcher. Maybe he was gonna maybe he was gonna go there with the catcher anyway, right? The catcher could have gone one, two. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So maybe the catcher was going to go there anyway. Googling the BB3 controls, yep. Why no re-roll? I don't know. It seems significant to me. I would have definitely expected him to have re-rolled that. Because this is just too free now, isn't it, up the field here? way too free up the field. Honestly, Le Peg could have re-rolled that. Le Peg could have re-rolled that, but I mean, I would have really liked it to be a pal. If I was him. Like, he doesn't, he didn't need it to be a pal, right? Because this, this one can come around here. And he can, like, cage up around here. But uh, I would have liked it to be a pal. Actually, use this school to go here. Interesting. Interesting. Eating into the time bank. So I guess the zombie's going to go in the corner here. So this is this might be the leap sack this turn. Four plus in. Dead, dead, dead. Excitement. I uh, honestly with 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 him not blocking with the mummy, I would have expected this guy in front. And then this guy around the back, and then like a rush from the mummy to secure that. Oh, so he's going to double rush so that he can foul the dancer. Oh, double rush, and then he gets the guard there as well. Yes, okay, really nice. Much better than that, and he can fill that in as well. Okay, so double rush from the mummy, and then that means he's got a mummy a bit far, further forward as well. Oh, he is going to foul the dancer as well. Dodge with him, he, yeah, he's definitely going to foul the dancer now. So it was a bit risky doing the dodge, and a bit risky doing the foul as well. Like, I think just moving the zombie in here was better, honestly. Just stand up the ghoul and move the zombie in, but. It's very understandable to want to foul the dancer and a sidestep which helps the one turn. So very understandable foul, but great turn actually from Lepeg there. Got the guard in to make it not an easy leap sack. Though we might be going for the leap sack still. Also actually leaving this open is nice as well, isn't it? So that if he'd moved the zombie in there, he could have leaped in here and pushed him away. So, by leaving the hole here, the push direction is really bad. So it was really nice from the peg. No leap sack from Core. Now I wonder if he regrets not re-rolling that dodge last turn. It seemed like it seemed like a re-roll to me. Three plus. Whoa. Great dice rolls.
So he's getting squeezed a little bit, but not too much. Um, and now he can he can move over the side here, or he can just you know consolidate by punching. Either one is fine, I think, with two more turns. I think just however he wants to do, this should be pretty dealable with. I mean, he's got to make the right the right moves and the right dice, of course. If anything goes wrong, it could be very tricky, but... And this is very easy to like have a secure cage, isn't it? Very easy. Like literally that one block. Well, no, one more block and he's got a safe cage. And he's in range, so... Well, <laughs> you risk the one in nine there. Oh wow, and a rush. We're moving the cage over here. I'm not such a fan of this. I think I preferred just punching where I was, staying where I was, knocking down the things that were basing me and keeping in a big mess with all of my players. Whereas now he's disconnected from his other mummy. He's disconnected from a ghoul, a zombie, and it's going to be very easy for Core just to dodge all of his players over because they're relves. And now his players are going to be cut off a little bit. So I'm not such a fan of this. Of course, like, you know, next turn he might be able to go back there. Like, it's it's not it's not a bad thing at all, really. It's just, I'm just not a big fan of it. I guess this ghoul's going to dodge. Try and protect the tackler a bit. So yeah, he's still in like a big blob. So I guess this is fine. And he's got more central. So in fact, maybe that's better than staying where he was. <laughs> you know, who knows? Who knows what the answer is? Down to a minute. But it's a nice shape, isn't it? Now he's much less disconnected now, but it does suck a bit having like the mummies far apart, right? Like if you've got the mummies together, then you've got a big load of strength and guard concentrated in the same area of the field. It's pretty strong. Whereas now he's gonna have a guard isolate like a mummy isolated this coming turn. The one turn will be very tricky, but I mean, if anyone can do it, it's Big Kev. So he's either saving his three rerolls for like a leap sack, which is going to be uphill, or uh, or the one turn, which is going to be hard versus yeah, guard mummies, etc. Ugh, dub skulls. Now we find out. No, he is. He is not saving them for the one turn. So it keeps the mummy tagged for another turn. And then he can just dodge away on the last turn, right? So it's so like this is the problem that Le Peg had: is that he's still faced with the same problem that he had last turn, except now he's got one less mummy in the mix, right? He's got one less strength five guarder in the mix. He is in a better spot in that he's more central. He's got that going for him.
And this is still pretty easy to be fair. Pretty easy, but um, he is missing that guard. Underneath. Yeah, this was the play. Start with the mummy. And then the zombie can clear him. And then this gives you the tackle bits and the sidestepper. Oh, I don't like doing the blockless block before that. Like, you have got to do it at some point. But I feel like I would have just rather just done the Tackle Blitz first. And now he's going to have Tackle on both dancers this turn, which is pretty nice, isn't it? Doesn't get the pal. Just a push. Cheeky wanna. So now this is Big Kev's last turn to defend. Like, yes, he'll have the one turn, but this is his last turn of defense. So does he just go for a strip, right? He could. Could do the a jump, then a dodge. No, a dodge two and then jump there, right? It's going to be uphill anyway, and he's got the catcher there to get away. So the tackle does have an effect. Four plus leap. Fails it. And the ghoul can score for free. With two re-rolls, I think you have to make the mighty blow hit. Uh, can you make this mighty blow hit? Maybe, right, if you like chain things through, maybe you can make a... Maybe you can get two assists to make this a 3D. 3D there, 3D there. Like you can make multiple 3D blocks. Oh, so he's three dicing with block. Well, wrestle. Could have been with block and tackle, couldn't it? That was weird. Maybe a touch of chalice nerves. Well, not chalice nerves. Uh, World Cup no, World Championship nerves. And now we now you don't make the blockless block there. Can't make it three D. Hello, fine here. So there you go, one one. Um, there is going to be. A one turn chance, but it's without re rolls and it's versus strength five mummies. This is very much looking like a draw for KFOG in his first game. And that's the question, Ribcoty, isn't it? That is the question. That is the question. Maybe. Like, the one turn isn't easy. It is hard versus mummies, yeah. Like no no frenzy, no juggernaut, no guard, no strength. Like all of the things that you'd want to make it easier, he does have the sidestep. But um all of the things that you'd want to make it easier, you don't have. So it's very much not easy.
So if he blitzes this guy and then sidesteps to there and then blocks him and then blocks him. But it's really hard to do that, isn't it? Because you need to block there. You'd have to blitz him into here. I'm, I'm, K Frog is the best in the world at one turning, so I'm sure he'll figure it out. But I'm just trying to work it out myself. Mm. Yeah, it's, it is possible. It is possible. Maybe, maybe it was worth the rerolls. Honestly, maybe. I, so maybe it was worth saving the rerolls. Yeah, maybe it was worth saving the rerolls for the one turn. Oh, he hasn't got many players. Maybe it's not possible. He's got eight players. Yeah, seven. He's got eight players. Maybe it's not possible with us this few players. Like he can collect the ball with a catcher and then like rush to get the ball in. So he's basically got eight players to do this one turn. So two in there. Three, four, five. It's going to be close. I think he could do it. I think he'd probably want the two rerolls to do it with, though. I wonder if the uphill sack was worth the two rerolls. I mean, probably, right? The uphill, the uphill sack is pretty likely with strip. And it's like, it just wins you the game, basically, doesn't it? Whereas this, even with all the rerolls, is not easy. This looks wrong to me from Cole. I've got to say, this looks absolutely wrong to me. I could be wrong, but this is looking like he's doing it wrong to me. I still think he's doing it wrong. Exactly, Chicken. Yes, I agree with Chicken. Yep. Yep, this looks incorrect. Incorrect from Big Kev. But you know, maybe he's just figuring it out and he's just putting things there and he'll he'll correct it later. No, he hasn't. That's a brutal kick. It's a timeout. Genius call. Now he really wishes he kept the rerolls, I think. <laughs> oh flip me. But the kick is brutal, but um, wow, wow, imagine getting the timeout, that's outrageous. That is absolutely outrageous. We'll never know if he messed up the one turn. Looks, it looks wrong to me though, I, 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 I'm with Jake and swap these two around. And uh, and then two players here, player here, blitz him into the sidestep, uh, sidestep up, block him, push him up, and then block him there and push him up to the third. So yeah, I think that was a mistake from Cole with his setup, but it doesn't matter, he got a timeout. Now I don't know how he was going to do it, but I just think, I think, I think mine and Chagan's way was the best. So it'd be interesting to speak to him and find out what he did, what his reasoning was. But um, can do that. You know, I'm sure he had a plan and it wasn't just a mistake. But it sure looked like a mistake. Yeah, I really hate timeouts, honestly. Like, it's because, you know, a blitz can be punishing, and so can a, a vicious ref, and so can uh, pitch invasions and stuff. But, like, a vicious ref and pitch invasion are just random, right? Blitz, you can play well to stop blitz affecting you as badly. But, like, timeout basically punishes you for playing well. 
I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It just feels the worst to me. These are on the sideline. Tempting him with the surf. He can touch the ball with a tackler. He could blitz there and then double rush to have tackle on the ball. But then he just two pluses away, right? And then hands off to this guy and then passes it, scores, whatever. So this is a very tough, very tough to work out what the best way to defend this is. I imagine it's going for the scoring threats, but... You know, because the fact it's got no re-rolls. <laughs> I mean, yes, son, and yep, it's, you know... <laughs> Blood Bowl is a brutal, horrible game a lot of the time. So it does fit perfectly in that... <laughs> <laughs> in that kind of thing um, but yeah I think catch the so I don't like the size step because if you don't power him it's really bad right but he gets it I, I would have blitzed the, the catcher there so that whatever happens I can put tackle on the on the uh, stripper right whereas if this is a push he sidesteps to here and protects his protects his uh Stripper. So I would I would have personally blitzed the catcher and then gone in. Um Kev used his rerolls on an uphill sack on turn fifteen. He rolled a one away from tackle and then rolled a three on the jump in. Uh, I don't know a bit. I think I I think I think You've got to do, I think you just have to deal with everything. I think blitz this guy. That put, push puts him out of range. And you get in on this, right? And then you just put in as much as you can. And, you know, ghouls run out, run back there. And you've got stuff either side. So I think, I think this was definitely the blitz. This was 100% the blitz for me. Because a push takes him out of range. And you get in tackle on the dancer like that was a real good blitz like didn't even need to blitz him with tackle right the tackle could have just gone there the tackle could have just gone there you didn't even need to uh didn't even need blitz him with tackle just blitz him with anything i mean he's locked this down pretty well He needs a bit more in front of this guy. Because the moment, what's this, a 4 3 2? So that makes it a. We can blitz him and then it's just a 4 2. So he needed more on this catcher. It's a blitz here, isn't it? And then it's a. It's a 4 2. Well, obviously, two twos, and then, you know, handing it off. Like, it's a lot of dice still. But, um. This seems like a pretty, uh. The obvious way to score is by blitzing this guy and then running through. It's not that unlikely. If he had two re-rolls, he'd have probably got it. Gets the wrestle. It is great as having a wrestler to, to do important blitzes like this where you just need to move them. I'll say PA4, so it's a 2, then a 4, then a 2 with a re-roll, then a 4 with a re-roll, and then three twos. Whoa, hello, Keith. So it's a lot of dice. I mean, if he had two re-rolls, this would be very, very likely. Really likely with two re-rolls. 
I mean, but you know, obviously you can't plan, you can't plan for a, uh, for a timeout, right? So he had to, he had, I think he had to put those re-rolls in to, to get the stop. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I said to him, re-rollable four, but then the two is no re-roll. Oh, he's just passing it for straight five. Two fours better, isn't it? Well, there you go. No need to feel bad for the peg. Um, a well-deserved draw. Uh, you know, it's tough. It's tough versus Big Kev. It's tough versus Wood Owls. He managed to play a pretty solid drive of his own. And then, yeah, the timeout punching would have been horrible. Um, would have felt really bad for him if he'd... I, I, I hate timeout so much. So, that, I mean, this, this is the thing, right? Like, you know, people aren't jokes in the World Cup. It's just because just because people might be the, the favourites. They're not favourites by much. Anything can happen. So, um, there you go. Congratulations to both of them. Well played, KFOG and LePeg. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.